Hello, my pre peers. All right, it's Mr. Moore. I'm back again. We are talking about building a box plot. Now, this was something that you would have learned in the sixth grade curriculum. So uh, nothing super out of the ordinary that you don't know already. Uh, but again, generally speaking, we are going to be looking at in this particular uh, unit, our graphic and interpretation unit, uh, the measures of central tendency. Those happen to be mean, median, mode, range. Now, the average, also known as the mean, is going to be where you add all of the values in a set. Then you're going to divide by the number of values in that set. Okay, once you do that, then you have your mean. Now you're going to use this typically when the data does not have any outliers, when the data is pretty um, homogenous, as they say. Pretty much this uh, median. This is the middle value, literally the one in the middle. If you have an odd set of, or an odd numbered set of data, then of course that uh, middle is going to be fairly obvious. It's literally right in the middle. Seven, of course, is odd. You have a number that is three on one side, three on the other side, and one in the middle. But if you had, say, like a data set of four, you have two that are technically in the middle. You would simply take those, average them, and find your median. Mode is the number that occurs most often. There can be no mode, one mode, or several modes. And you would use this when you um, want to just show how many um, are occurring. Back to medium for a second, I didn't say when you would use it. You would use that data set when it does have outliers, when you're trying to actually find what would actually be, <clears throat> excuse me, more so in the middle, your range. Um, that is your high to your low the difference between the highest and the lowest value when you simply want to find the spread or the range of the data. Now we're going to take a look at constructing a box plot a little bit later, but for the time being, what we're going to do is we're going to look at a couple more definitions. So variability. This describes how spread out your data is. In math, we use variability to uh, measure change and again spread. The interquartile range is something that is very common to look at in a box plots. It is a more stable measure of spread in that it is not influenced by your outliers, those numbers that are unusually large or unusually small. The interquartile range is going to be more useful as a measure of the spread than the range because of its stability, meaning that more of your values are going to be found within that uh, interquartile range. So if I switch over to my um, my work here we're going to look at constructing a box plot for this particular data set now typically when you're dealing with any data set what you want to do is you want to go ahead and put those values in order and i'm going to go ahead and do that now for data set number one i'm going to put them in sequential order from least to greatest we have two and i like to mark these off so i make sure that i account for everything three we have four I have two values of five, mark that off. I then have six, seven, and eight, okay? So that is that. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight data points. So I know that when I divide my data point right down the middle, I'm not gonna have a number that sticks out as my median, so therefore I'm going to actually have to calculate my median. Luckily, both the numbers in the middle here are 5. So when I add 5 and 5 together, that gives me 10. Divided by 2, I get the average. And the average is going to be 5 again. I also like to lay out all of my values. So when I'm uh, constructing my box plot, it's fairly simple to do that. I don't have to look very far. Um, in the third and first quartile will make sense in just a moment when I... I'm doing my box plot, okay? Hopefully I have some parents listening to this video as well so you can help your uh, child. So let's go ahead and turn that light off. It's a little bit better this way. All right, so next thing that I want to do is I have my median. This is what I did here. That's the median of all the data points. I'm gonna go ahead and write that down. Now, I have three numbers on either side of my median. What I want to do now is I want to find the median of the lower quartile, the median of the upper quartile, which is here. So again, we have lower quartile, we have upper quartile, okay? 
So at this point, I know that the two numbers that are right here in the middle, because there are four on either side, because remember we had eight, okay? So we were looking at um, the lower quartile, we have uh, upper quartile there, okay? So I know that in these data points, because I've divided it into four and four, because there were eight originally, I know that there are really two here in the middle. So that's three and four. 3 plus 4 is 7, divided by 2 is going to give me 3.5. So my lower quartile median is going to be 3.5. I'm going to do the same thing on this side, where I have 1, 2, 3, 4 values. The numbers that are right here in the middle are 6 and 7. 6 plus 7 is 13. 13 divided by 2 is going to be 6.5. So 6.5 is going to be my third quartile median. Okay, now... I know just by looking that my lowest value is 2, highest value is 8. When I start to construct my box plot, what I want to do is I want to use an appropriately sized graph. And I'm going to use all of this data here that I've already compiled and written down. Now, I want to go ahead and label this as... Uh, I'm going to, again, make that appropriately sized graph. I want to start this. I'm going to think I'm going to start it at uh, zero. Write it with a pen so you can see it better. One, two, three, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now an appropriately sized graph again is one that encompasses all of these data points. So starting a little bit above my line, I'm going to start making dots. Okay, hence the um, the ones that I've identified over here, so dots. So let's go ahead and put a dot here, that's two. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna just follow along, that's eight. I have five. I have 3.5 or three and a half there. Six or 6. Point, or 6.5 or six and a half here. Now, what I want to do at this point, it doesn't quite look like a box plot just yet, but because there's just dots. So I'm going to connect my lowest value to my first quartile. I'm going to connect my highest value to my third quartile. Okay. And now what I want to do is I want to start off by constructing my box. I'm going to go up, over, up, over. Okay. So now I'm going to finish it off by connecting my box. So I have a box plot at this point. So the reason that this is important is that this box will show my interquartile range, which we will talk about later in a different lesson. Um, actually, let's go ahead and hit it now. So again, my interquartile range, or IQR, is um, going to be calculated by subtracting my third quartile from my first quartile, which is going to give me an interquartile range of 3, or 3.0 in this case. So if I look here at my data points, I'm going to ask myself, how many of these data points actually fall within this um, interquartile range? So I know that 4 falls in there. I know that 5, 5 of course will fall in there, 6 will fall in there. So of my 8 data points, about 4 fall within this range, making it a more stable measure, these values here, um, because I'm discounting my uh, my lowest and my highest. So it's going to be a more stable uh, measure of variability. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at the second one. I'm going to do the exact same thing over here. I want to go ahead and start off by putting lowest, highest. We have median of the entire data set. Uh, I'm going to, in this case, put the uh, upper quartile. I guess I should follow along with what I did before. So I'm going to switch this up and do lower quartile. So I don't want anybody to get lost as to why I did whatever I'm doing. Upper quartile. Now, lower quartile is also known as the first. And upper quartile, also known as the third quartile. All right, drawing my boxes. I like labeling. Label, 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 label. Okay move this up. So my data set here is unsorted. Now what I want to do is I want to go ahead and sort everything out. So I know that 2.0 will come there. 3.2 is next. And again I'm going from least to greatest. 4.4, 4.4, 4. 
and 6.2 and 7. <clears throat> so how many data points do I have in this case? I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, 6 data points. I want to go ahead and divide these in half so I can see exactly what I have. So I have the lower quartile, upper quartile. So um, before I did this a little bit differently, so I'm going to show you a slightly different way. That might make more sense to you. I don't know. I want to give you different ways to look at it. Now, I have three values on either side. Okay, so my lower quartile, my upper quartile. So does it make more sense at this point for me to go ahead and identify my um, lower quartile median? Because I know I have three. There's number right in the middle. I have three. There's a number that's right in the middle. So let's go ahead and fill those in. 3.2, 6.2. Okay, now... Because of the fact that I have an even number of data points, let's go ahead and um, locate my median for the overall set of data. All right, so the two numbers that are there in the middle, 4.4, if I take the average of 4.4 and 4.4, it stands a reason that it's going to be 4.4. Now, let's go ahead and look at my lowest value. I have 2, and I have my highest value of 7. I'm going to do the exact same thing over here where I am going to go ahead and construct my dot plot appropriately um, box plot sorry excuse me box plot hopefully I didn't say dot plot box plot um, <laughs> I have graphing on the mind all right so again we have 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and I hope that you guys can see this. Go over it. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All right. Starting off with my dots. Lowest, two. Highest, seven. And it's about right there. It's a little bit less than four and a half. 3.2. Eh, closer to the three. And then we have 6.2. Close to the six. Again, remember, like I said, I like to start off by connecting my lowest to the first quartile, highest to the third quartile. Then I'm going to start drawing my box. Now I'm switching colors quite a bit. Okay, go over, down, over. Then I just want to go and connect this dot. So again, if we were to look to check to see which of these values fall within here, I know that 4.4 does, 2 doesn't. 6.2, yes, because it's right on the edge. 3.2, yes. 4.4, .4, yes. Okay, 7, no. So four of these six values fall within here. So again, this is a more stable measure of the variability. That is it, you guys. Okay, that's how you construct a box plot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sign off now. Now, if you have any questions, please, 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 please come prepare to class with those questions. Come to tutorials with all of those questions that I love to take to get your understanding um, um, right and situated. What I also want to do is to implore you to watch this video again if it doesn't quite make sense. And um, as always, uh, I am open to comments at the bottom and I can um, hope to answer those. I want you to have a good day and as always, I will see you tomorrow in class.